is Susan Betts. This is my son, Colby. Um, we have been a member of Trinity. We started going to Trinity when I was pregnant with Chance, and he just turned 17, so we've been active at the church for 17 years. Um, Colby graduated high school in 2014, and shortly after that, our lives cha changed. From 2014, when I graduated high school, um, I ultimately uh, became defiant uh, against my parents and um, the instructions that they suggested to me, and uh, I took my own will back, and that ultimately led led me down a path of destruction, um, getting mixed in with drugs, uh, the wrong crowds, people that uh, did not believe um, in the morals that I was taught going through high school in the house that I lived in, uh, and ultimately, um, through the decisions that I was making, uh, I became selfish with my emotions and my time, and uh, the drugs just ultimately took over uh, my life and that became the priority uh, over anybody. One of the lowest moments uh, that ultimately brought me to uh, my rock bottom. Um, I had been kicked out of the drug dealer's house uh, that I was currently living with. Um, and I just remember it was uh, a hot May day. Uh, I was wearing nothing but fleece, pajama pants, no shoes, no shirt. And I remember getting in my truck after having to talk to the police uh, after an altercation and looking in the mirror and I just did not recognize the man I was looking at. And I thought that I was worse than um, my biological father and those who um, I never wanted to become like. And I ultimately felt like I was worse than and I knew I had nobody. Uh, I had burnt every bridge with my family, my friends, uh, any acquaintances in between, and I ultimately felt alone and that I had nobody. Uh, after that, uh, I, I told myself that if I could detox off of the substances that I was on for a week, then maybe I could give myself a chance at continuing on this journey of sobriety. And so I checked in to the Luxury Inn Hotel in Mustang, Oklahoma, and pretty much just barricaded myself in a room uh, for a week and um, used the last bit of money that I had and tried to detox off of what I was on. And after that week was up uh, was when I called my mom. I just told her, I said, I can't do this anymore and I'm ready, I'm ready to accept the help and do whatever is necessary because I'm just tired of living like this. He called and asked, can I at least just come take a shower? And I said, I'm gonna be here for about 30 minutes, you can come. It had gotten to the point where he was not allowed to be in our house by himself. And he came. <laughs> And he took his shower, and I remember you were sitting right out there on the front porch, and you were so skinny. You had lost so much weight, and I, I couldn't see my Colby. And I finally just said, this is it, Colby. And you did finally admit to me, Mom, I'm afraid I'm gonna die. And I just walked off. I had to walk off for a few seconds because I didn't know, I didn't know what to say to you. And I was so scared. Rob's Ranch is where ultimately I got re-centered in my relationship with Christ and ultimately began to uh, regain my confidence in um, knowing I have a second chance, but knowing that my words aren't gonna fix uh, all the pain and suffering that I caused. And I knew that uh, it would have to be my actions. 
and life today, um, I still don't feel deserving of the life I have today. And you know, Brothers in Recovery has given me the second chance at life to be able to use my experience um, and the, the trials and tribulations that I went through uh, as a testimony to help other addicts and um, people that are wanting to get the help that they need. But being able to be a, a present son to my parents and an older brother, um, uh, something that uh, you don't realize uh, how great you really got it until it's gone and just being able to be a, um, a family member being able to be an active member in, at Trinity and seeing all the men and women that have come up to me and said that they prayed for me uh, means the world because um, I thought I was just alone uh, through my own actions and to know that I had a a church family and not just my own family that were praying for me uh, is amazing. What I would encourage uh, anyone that is in the same situation that I was in, uh, don't give up. God has a purpose and a plan for you. Reach out, pick up the phone and call someone. There are resources out there um, that are willing and able to get you the help and the treatment that you need. and even myself included, and I want anybody uh, that um, has questions or concerns to come up and talk to me and know that it's uh, all from love and I uh, just want to see those who are sick just get better. And what I would encourage or say that if you are walking through something along these lines is it's easy to give up. It's hard to be faithful and to pray and to plead and beg for your prayers. But they are heard and they are answered and it might not be in the timeline that you are wanting or thinking, but they will be answered in God's way. And the wonderful the wonderful aspect of looking back at it and seeing God's hand in every step of the way is such a miracle and such wonderful grace that He gives us. And I would just say don't give up on prayer. Prayer is get on your knees and pray. Even when you don't want to, because I can promise you'll feel better after you do.